Hello friends, welcome back to library and our book, um, Ulysses, Flora and Ulysses, The Eliminated Adventures. So we left off with Flora sitting on the horsehair sofa of Dr. Meacham, who's a little bit mm, suspect, I guess is the proper word to say. I don't know how to peg her. I don't know if she's a good guy or a bad guy, but I think we're about to find out. So we left off with chapters 38, and it was that picture of the squid that was eating the boat. And Dr. Meacham said, oh, the poor lonely giant squid. And Flora was like, wait a minute, no. <laughs> Let's continue. I'm curious about this. So chapter 39, the tears roll off. Dr. Meacham came out, came out of the kitchen holding a pink plate with small sandwiches on it. She sat down next to Flora. You are enjoying the horsehair sofa, she said to Flora. I guess, said Flora. She wasn't sure exactly how someone enjoyed a horsehair sofa. You will eat a jelly sandwich, said Dr. Meacham. She extended the plate to Flora. Ulysses leaped off Flora's shoulder and into her lap. He sniffed the plate. Our patient is hungry, said Dr. Meacham. He never had breakfast, said Flora. She took two sandwiches and handed one to Ulysses. This sofa, said Dr. Meacham, is the sofa of my... My grandfather, grandmother, I'm sorry. She was born on this sofa in Blunders Meeson. She lived the whole of her life there, and she is buried there in a dark wood. But that is a different story. What I meant to say is that when I was a girl in Blunder Meeson, I sat on this sofa and spoke with my grandmother about inconsequential things, well, in, well into the gloom of the evening. And that is what a girl in Blunder Meeson did in those days. She was expected to speak of inconsequential things as the gloom of the evening descended. Also, she must knit. Always the gloom was descending in Blunder Meeson. Always. Always one was knitting outfits for the little trolls. What little trolls, said Flora, and where is Blunder Meeson? Oh, never mind about the trolls for now. I meant only to say that life was very gloomy then, and one was always knitting. It sounds lousy, said Flora. It was exactly this. Lousy, said Dr. Mission. She smiled. Her dentures were very bright. There was a smear of grape jelly on one of her fake inc incisors. Flora reached for another sandwich. Had terrible things can happen to you? ever warned against eating jelly sandwiches in the house of a woman from Blunder Meeson? Your father is a lonely man, said Dr. Meeson, also very sad. To leave you, this broke his heart. It did, said Flora. Yes, yes, Dr. Mr. George Buckman has sat on this horsehair sofa many times. He has talked of his sadness, and he has wept. This sofa has seen the tears of many people. It is a sofa that is good for tears. They roll off it, you see. My father had sat on this couch and wept as the gloom of the evening descended. Flora suddenly felt like she might cry too. What was wrong with her? Seal blubber, she thought, and the words steadied her. She handed another sandwich to Ulysses. Your father is very capacious of heart, said Dr. Misham. Do you know what this means? Flora shook her head. It means the heart of George Buckman is large. It is capable of containing much joy and much sorrow. Oh, said Flora. For some reason, she heard the William Spiver's voice saying that the universe was a random place. Capacious heart, said Dr. Misham's voice. Random universe, said William Spiver's. Capacious, random, heart, universe. Flora felt dizzy. I'm a cynic, she announced for no particular reason and to, and, and, and to loud a voice. Bah, cynics, said Dr. Misham. Cynics are people who are afraid to believe. She waved her hand in front of her face as if she were brushing away a fly. Do you believe in, um, things, said Flora. Yes, yes, I believe, said Dr. Misham. She smiled her too bright smile again. You have heard of Pascal, Pascal's wager? No, said Flora. Pascal, said Dr. Misham, had it that since it could not be proven whether God existed, one might as well believe that he did. Because there was everything to gain by believing and nothing to lose. 
This is how it is for me. What do I lose if I choose to believe? Nothing. Take this squirrel, for instance, Ulysses. Do I believe he can type poetry? Sure, I do believe it. There is much more beauty in the world if I believe such a thing is possible. Flora and Dr. Misham looked at Ulysses. He was holding half a sandwich in his front paws. There were blobs of grape jelly in, this whis in his whiskers. Do you know what a superhero is? said Flora. Sure, I know what a superhero is. Ulysses is a superhero, said Flora. But he hasn't really done anything heroic yet. Mostly he's just flown around. He lifted a vacuum cleaner over his head. He wrote some poetry. He hasn't saved anyone, though. And that's what superheroes are supposed to do, save people. Who knows what he will do, said Dr. Misham. Who knows whom he will save? So many miracles have not yet happened. Flora watched as one of the jelly blobs on Ulysses' whisker trembled and fell in slow motion onto the horsehair sofa. All things are possible, said Dr. Misham. When I was a girl in Buttermisen, the miraculous happened every day, or every other day, or every third day. Actually, sometimes it didn't happen at all, even on the third day, but still, we expected it. You see what I'm saying? Even when it didn't happen, we were expecting it. We knew the miraculous would come. There was a knock at the door. See, said Dr. Misham, this will be your father, Mr. George Buckland. Flora stood and went to the door and opened it. It was her father, and he was smiling again, still, which did seem kind of miraculous. Hi, Pop, she said. You see, said Dr. Misham, he smiles. Flora's father's smile got bigger. He took off his hat. He bowed. George Buckman, he said. How do you do? Flora couldn't help it. She smiled, too. She was still smiling when a noise that sounded like the end of the world echoed through the hallway of the Blixen Arms. One minute, her father was standing there with his hat in his hand, smiling, and the next minute, Mr. Claus, the cat one, came out of nowhere and landed right on top of George Buckman's unprotected head. <laughs> Fortunately, a superhero was present. Sunny side up! So here comes... <laughs> Ulysses flying on top of the cat and pulling him down, lifting him up, and looks to be he's going to be tossed, tosses him down the hallway. For the love of Pete! Holy gumball! Vanquish! And the superhero was enormously, inordinately pleased with himself. He felt immensely powerful. He felt like writing a poem. Chapter 41 I Promise. They were in the car. Flora's father's hands were on the steering wheel at 10 o'clock and 2. Flora was sitting up front, and Ulysses' head was out the window. They were heading back to Flora's mother's house in spite of Flora's pro protestations. We have to go back, said her father. We have to return at the regular Saturday afternoon time. We have to act normal, natural, unconcerned. Flora wanted to object. But she could read the writing on the wall, or rather she could read the words that hovered above her dad, above her and her father and the squirrel. Destiny could no longer be forestalled. The arch nemesis must be faced. Holy Gumba, said her father. His right ear was wrapped in a huge amount of gauze. His head looked lopsided. Holy unanticipated occurrences. A squirrel vanquished a cat. He shook his head. He smiled. And now it's time for another battle, said Flora. Everything will be fine, said her father. So you say, said Flora. It started to rain. Ulysses pulled his head back into the car. He looked up at Flora, and the signs of his little whiskered face calmed her somehow. She smiled at him, and the squirrel sighed happily and curled up in her lap. When I was a girl in Blunder Meeson, Dr. Meeson had said to Flora when, when they were all leaving apartment 267, we wondered always if we would see each other again. Each day was uncertain. So to say goodbye to someone was uncertain too. Would you see them again? Who could say? Blunder Meeson was a place of dark secrets, unmarked graves, terrible curses. Trolls were everywhere. So we said goodbye to each other the best way we could. We said, I promise to always turn back toward you. I say those words to you now, Flora Bell. I promise to always turn back toward you. And now you must say them to me. I promise to always turn back toward you, Flora had said. She whispered the words again, now to the squirrel. I promise to always turn 
back toward you. She put a finger on Ulysses' chest. His tiny heart was beating out a message that felt like, I promise, I promise, I promise. Hearts were the strangest things. Pop, said Flora. Yes, said her father. Can I feel your heart? My heart, said her father. Okay, sure. And then, for the first time ever, George Buckman took both his hands off the steering wheel while the car was in motion. He opened his arms wide. Flora gently moved Ulysses out of her lap and onto the seat beside her, and then she reached up and across and put her hand on the left side of her father's chest. And she felt it, her father's heart beating there inside of him. It felt very certain, very strong, and very large, just like Dr. Misham had said, capacious. Thank you, she told him. Sure, he said, you bet. He put his hands back on the steering wheel at 10 o'clock and 2, and the three of them, Flora, her father, and the squirrel, traveled the rest of the way home in a strange and peaceful silence. The only noise was from the windshield wipers. They hummed back and forth and back and forth, singing a sweet, out-of-tune song. The squirrel slept, and Flora Bell Buckman was happy. All right, so we will stop there for today. And... They are on their way to face Flora's mother, the arch nemesis. Remember, she wanted to have uh, George Buckman bury the squirrel so that it was no longer an issue. And here they all are, all three of them heading back into Flora's mother's home. Let's see what happens. I am so curious. Do you guys have any predictions? I don't know. Will Flora always have Ulysses? Or will she set them free? So curious. So many questions. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, have a great week, everyone.